Hi, everybody. Welcome to Enlightened Up. This is Craig Shoemaker, your host. So glad you could be with us. This is a show about just what the title says, Enlightening Up. Uh, we believe that the world needs us now more than ever. We hope that you realize that and pass the word around. You know, I was thinking to myself, years ago, I was part of multi-level marketing, and you had to get six people. You called six people. They got six people. They got six people. Why don't we do that? You contact six people, tell them about the show. Then you're doing your part in spreading a good message throughout the world about the healing powers of laughter, enlightenment, having fun. I was just, uh, I just got a couple reviews the other day. Thank you very much. They said this is kind of like inside the actor's studio for comedians. So we do have a lot of comedians. Today is no exception. And uh, we have, again, no exception, another old friend. I've been at this a long time. If you don't know who I am, yeah, don't even Google it. Just trust me. I've been at this a long time. <laughs> a lot of a lot of credits and all that kind of stuff. And but this is what it's turned into. I really want to have purpose behind the laughter. It's not just about making you laugh for a few minutes. It's about a little deeper dive, a little bit of thinking. Now, today's guest, that will not be the case. <laughs> Already, you're starting. Already. It, it, we haven't even started the show. Nothing has passed. You, I heard from everybody that you had been a better person, that you were nicer, that you had cleaned up your act. And no, and the first thing you say is, it's, I'm not as good as anybody else. I just told my I therapist. Didn't, I didn't say as good as anybody I, else. That's you what misheard. I heard. That's, that's what, what you heard. heard. That's what I heard. So I see you haven't changed either. Because the interpretation... I just spoke to my sponsor, and she told me that, you know, that I think that everyone hates me, so it's okay. Okay, so you have a, a sponsor. That's great. I'm looking for sponsors, too. It, well, that's, you know. By the way, I'm putting the word out there. If anybody wants to sponsor this this cavalcade we call a show, Cavalcade of Comedy and Fun, you can sponsor us and contact me. Now, Jason, he has a sponsor he calls you every you day. Didn't, you didn't even say my name. I am getting to it. Okay, go ahead. I'm not By the way, it. you're already seeing how this is going to go. I'm not saying anything. I'll be quiet. You're, that's also I how wish, it's going to go. I hope Gordon cut me from here up because that's what I wanted. And the light is not on, the extra light. They, they had that for the straight this people. This is going to be a nightmare. It's okay. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not, I'll, I'll he already quiet. said five times he's not going to say it. I love to be recorded because then you get to go, see, listen to the recording. There's my backup. I wish this was around when I'm debating with my wife. I say, look, uh, can, we go to the, can we cut to the video? So right now we're hearing he's saying, I'm not going to talk, but then he talks. <laughs> and he's trying to control how I do the show. No, I'm not. The show, yes, you are. The show is it, what we try to do is it unfolds naturally okay. and organically. We're going to get all your credits in. I, it's, it, it, Justin, you can say whatever you want. No, it, oh, I can't. You've already told me what to say. Before I didn't tell we you can, what to say. That's not true. I, I said, have a thing hey, called you. SIFTA. It's Save It for the Air. And you could not do that. He was begging Gordon, our producer, who was having some technical difficulties. I'm, I'm going to walk. I swear to God, I'm was, walking. <laughs> do not. You've done that before, so you haven't changed a I've bit. I've never walked before. I saw you. Well, you've had. I watched you have uh, a tantrum once on something we worked on. I will, ne I will never it forget it. It wasn't a tantrum. It. Uh, well, we'll talk about that it. That wasn't a tantrum. Well, Why we'll, are you saying all these things? You're making me sound crazy. I'm not, so, <laughs> I'm not saying anything, actually. You are. I'm trying to get this start of the show, Go Jason. Ahead. Go ahead. I said your first name. Yes, you did. Okay. And by the way, isn't it isn't like radio. You gotta kinda like trust me. I trust it's you. It's not man. like radio. They literally downloaded something called Enlightened Up with Craig Shoemaker with special guest Jason Stewart. They already know your name. Oh, okay. It's not like the he's been seen on. It's not like that. I know we have an old school thought. Yes, we do sometimes. I do the same thing when I do radio shows. I go, Can you hit this, hit this, hit this? It'll get to it. We'll get to it. And besides, they're gonna look you up. They're going to hear from me organically that I just watched your video and you're such an amazing actor. They're going to hear that. I'll be. I'll, I quiet. might edit that out. <laughs> so, so. Oh, you're going to edit this? No, I am not going to edit so it. That's it, a joke. Do you know we're in the comedy yes, business? I do. We're in the I was sarcasm business. I was going back. So you were you were reversing I'm, I'm my playing. joke and joking me off. Yes, I'm playing back with. We're you. in a joke off. Yes, we are. We're <laughs> so, playing. This is comedy back and forth. So yes, Jason Stewart. I know what Stewart. you're trying to do, and I know what I'm doing, and I know what you're doing. You absolutely don't know what I'm what I'm doing. So <laughs> you, as a matter of fact, he came here. I'm just going to tell you, he came here and thought it was a live show. I said. If it's a live show, we're 10 minutes late already. Well, I didn't then he was hocking Gordon to get started because no, I didn't know. we could not stop talking out there because we haven't seen one another no, in a yeah. while. 
And we like, genuinely like each other. Exactly. Genuinely. We go back a long time. I go back to, I was going to say when you had hair, but actually yes. it wasn't, uh, was it real? Have, it wasn't real hair. <laughs> no. Was it not? No, that was real hair when I knew you, when I did that. No, you had a wig. No, that was it then? Yes, you had a remember. wig. I don't remember. You, I remember it. I don't remember what year. I saw the glue. What year was, uh, what year were we doing? Uh, it was a thing. Whatever called, the year was, was you funny, had a wig at one time. Funny. Is that not correct? Yes. Okay. No longer. You are going with it the was ball. A, it was a hair piece. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hair piece. I wore a lot of different ones. Yeah, I know that. I was. Over the years. Yeah. You wore them like ascots. You just changed them. Like, like. Well, as the styles changed. <laughs> Right. That's true. You had. Well, I lost my hair very young, so I didn't. And Did I, you? Young face. Oh, is that going to get sad now? No. You lost it like with typhoid fever. You had bad water okay, or something. He's, he's How gonna, did you? Gordon, he's going to bully me on this show. I am not bullying you. Let's put that out of your head. I am not that guy. I am your friend, your ally. I'm trying to bring out. I am trying to bring out in this show possibly things that you haven't talked about. I've talked about my hair. Things that aren't. I understand that. Uh, but where we're going with this is yeah. it should be the case where you don't go to your comfort zone. We all know you know your own jokes. You know We'll come up with some of our own brand new, spontaneous, improvisational material on the spot. Okay. That's where we'll go with it. Let's go. Oh, deep breath. I need a sponsor now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean a financial one. So uh, speaking of that, um, do I recall that you are, you do have any addictive personality thing going on with you and take care of that? No, because of the 12 step, pro I've been 12 step program 31 years. Okay. I was getting there, but it's a nun as programs. I didn't want to say, but you no, said, but I, I, you I, can I, out no, yourself. Yeah, yeah. I started with the food and then I went into Al-Anon because I'm powerless over people, places and things and abuse of people. <laughs> Is that what it says in the in yeah, the honestly, in the credo? Yeah, somebody said to me the other day, "God, you've changed so much." Yeah, you, there's a. They said that about me that I've changed, no, or they, you've they, changed. They, people talked about you and said you have, but obviously that's not true. What, um, who are these people? Just, I, now no, I'm paranoid. Now no, I need Al Anon because of you. Just the other people, you know, on the net. That's terrible. Um, no, I'm kidding. You uh, said no, you were doing my show, and they said, "Oh, he's no, honestly." It's a good thing you're, you're not talking to him in 1998. I won't say on the air. I'm not going to say people's names, but people said, "Hey, you know." You were a handful at times in your life, as we all were. But I think also, just to be really honest on what you're yes. saying, what we do is so personal, and it's about us, and there's no way to get away from that. Yeah. And when I, we were doing, when you say tantrum or whatever word you want to use for what happened, I was doing a play with you. It was called uh, Funny Business. Yes. And you were the lead, handsome, leading man, and I was the goofball uh, <laughs> playing the first time I ever played anybody gay in anything. Because you were in the closet for years. I want to get to that. I was not for years, my whole life, until, the, until around that time. So this was before 19... 93. So let's, let's talk out. about that emotionally at it the was, time it was, you were it was, to be in a closet it, for all of those years is a, a really, it's torture on yourself. I was asked to do it by Holly Levin. Mm -hmm. I forgot how she saw me somewhere and I was asked and I was, and I was absolutely frightened because it was before uh, I came out. Yes, that's what so I mean. I that's scary. What, yeah. what would be seemingly as a, a, in my mind, a character. And, right. And it, now, wait a second. You knew you were gay at the time. And of you course. Were, of course. Well, I'm, don't give me the of course. I, yeah. Nobody knows you, by the way, that's right. listening no, right but now. I mean, you have to you, you know, let us know emotionally yeah, where I, you were. So yeah, I, you're I've hiding. Been, I've been out to my family and out to you my were. friends for years. Okay. But I wasn't out in my work. And, you know, this was 19, what was it? It was 89 or 90. It was really a long time ago. Right about 90, yeah. Yeah. And this was when things were really going badly for me. I had done a movie called Kindergarten Cop. My part got cut down. I thought it was going to be a big deal for me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So that's how things are going badly for well, you? Well, no. You, when, you, when you're in a movie. <laughs> we go a little deeper than that. No, when, you do, when you're doing, when you when you're cut out of a movie, yeah, but come things on, things are going badly. You, you spend 15 years trying to get a big part in okay. something, so your life changes. You get in an Ivan Reitman film, who had done Ghostbusters. Yeah. You're so excited. You get the film, and I remember I went to the screening for the cast and crew at Universal. It was this big party, and I'd never been to anything like that in my life. You know, big stars and people and money and everything, fountains of chocolate, and you know, this was just for the cast and crew. Mm -hmm. And I remember Ivan Reitman walked by me, and he says, "You're still in the movie." And I thought, yes. Uh huh. It was cut down to one line, which was one word or two words, and one uh, close up. 
and one line off camera. I want to get down to the part that but this let me is tell what you, you list, though. This is what yes, you list. This, like, I was kidnapped by a serial pedophile. That would be on the list. No, no. But I'm not I, thinking I was cut. You're, judge, I was, you're I, judging me. And I, let me I'm let me, not judging let you. Let me tell you what I'm, it felt like I'm because saying, I had yes. worked so hard from the time I, I got was it. 14 years old studying in class. It was a big, big disappointment. Yeah. Yes. And I thought, oh, my God, okay, so this is not going to happen the way. And I'd never had – it didn't occur to me that that could happen. Mm -hmm. And plus – uh, it's not to, that was one That's thing. That's like the old cutting room floor, they call yeah, it. That, yeah, it, was, it wasn't just that. It was one thing. It was also living my life as a human being, not be able to talk about the man That's that the I part. was involved. Of course. Yeah, but it's all... It, That's it's not the just dark one, days. Yeah, yeah, but it's all of that. It's, it's also... An accumulation uh, of things at that particular time in 1990 were going on for you. Yeah, and along I Along with career-wise. I was trying yes. to move into being a headliner, but I couldn't talk about my life. And that's the whole key to being a great headliner is it's a truth. And being and truth then, is the best comedy. And then being a, a you know a, a gay man, basically, I couldn't talk about anything that wasn't when it, it, above a certain age. Right. I mean, and it, you can't lie and go, "Hey, how about kids?" Oh, I did lie. You didn't. You didn't do anything like. No, I used to have a punk rock girlfriend. I used to put my hand out of the car to help her out of the car. She put her cigarette out, and I used to. Talk, I said, "Girls don't <laughs> find me sexually stimulating." I don't know why. You know, this is to, the old material. Yeah, from, yeah. You should sell this to a straight guy. Yeah, I mean, because you can't use it anymore. No, no. But I, but it was it was what I had to do. Yeah. It, there's no way to explain it to you. What it, I'll, I'll tell you what I tell reporters all the time. Yeah. Is that I say, "What was it like being in the closet?" It's like being in a closet, standing on the shoes. There's hat boxes and shit in the way. You're behind a leather jacket. Once in a while, someone comes, they open the door, they flash the light in front of your face, they take something out, and then they slam the door, and that's how you make all your decisions. Now, this show— Did you hear what I said? I didn't, because I'm going to tell you why I did. That's, that's because you, I wasn't interested once you I said know, you've but, told other reporters. But I'm, just I'm saying, interested in— I understand, but that's— Come that, up with something now. But that's that's what it yeah. is to me. Yeah. That's how I made my I decisions. Got it. That's yeah. how I did it, and I had no way of um, discerning anything. Yeah. I didn't have—I wasn't a real— complete person I'm and, I, and I'm, I I I relate to it as an empath big time empath so I relate to it as that I can't relate to it specifically except for maybe I've been in a closet that I hate kids no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to come up with a parallel but I can't because but I I've always had empathy for the closeted including you I mean by the way you, it never felt like that you were pretty tough on me by the way you were really tough on me. we all knew it didn't matter it's none of your business. No, but Seriously, it's none of our business. It's none of your business. But you, you know what I mean? Because I'll tell you why. It had nothing to do with you. It wasn't about you. And that's what happens when you're, you're a gay person is it becomes about everybody else. And that's how you make your decisions because of what other people think. Well, let's I, talk about this. Let's, let's dive into this in, in a way that you haven't dove into it before. Okay. Well, I'll I'll tell, I'm going to do some recent reflection. Thing. I talked okay. to my mom the other day. Yeah. I said, Ma, we were talking. My mom lives next door to me. Uh, in, my, in my apartment complex, I'm up here and she's down here. So we have a staircase between us. Mm -hmm. And we were having dinner the other night. We sat down in the living room. I said, Mom, I want to ask you some questions. I want you to be honest. Don't hold back. I said, what was it like having a gay kid in the 70s and 80s? Mm -hmm. She says, it was awful. It was completely the worst yeah. thing that could have ever happened to us. We were embarrassed. We were ashamed. We were uncomfortable. We yeah. didn't know what to do with you. So that's the way I grew up. Got it. That's the way, that's what I felt. So I used to think, until, and this is something brand new, and I've never talked about it on the air. Ta-da, good luck to you. Um, I used to think, and for a long time, and still do occasionally, that people don't like me yeah. because of who I am. Because well, of, hold up, because of who you are or because you're gay? They're two different um, topics. You think have, about that. Think of it this way. Yeah. It's not as clear as that because it's, it, that, that, that idea came through a child. But do you have an assumption that they don't like you because you're gay. Let's, oh, definitely. Good. Okay. That's where it came from. Okay. From, let me. Because, let, can I reflect something back to you that you might have never heard before? But f yeah. Okay. That's I where wanna, I want to go with this whole finish, conversation. I just want to finish. The yeah. Thought. Go ahead. Yeah. Hold the thought. Yeah. So I grew up with that knowingness the whole time, and that put on me from a very young age. Yeah. Really, like, like when you say to me, "Oh, we all knew," that just fucking. Can I say that? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, that, that just fucking makes me nuts. Yeah, because yeah. it becomes all about you. Well, let me tell you how it's not. But it doesn't matter how what you think. Uh, but that's what you I know say. Why? Because that's the whole thing. I want to respond to what you said I about it. Doesn't matter what I think I, because it does matter what everyone thinks but, because they're the ones pissing you off. 
They weren't. It's not real. Sure, they anymore. are. You're pissed off right now. No, I'm not. You it's, said you just told me that you're pissed off for the moment. For right. The moment. That's what I'm saying. Let me get to what I'm trying to get at. God, I'm glad you're not my therapist. I never get a word in. This is fantastic. You've got to get a word in. Please play that back. Gordon, is he getting words in? Gordon, <laughs> this you is like agree him, with me or this, him? This is like him saying, Gordon, is he getting words in or not? Is he getting words? Oh, he's he goes, not even watching. He says, it. He's not even listening. <laughs> he says he's not getting a word in it. I'm d- dominating the conversation. Well, you're is, his boss. Is what he is he, he going to say? Of course, he's going to be honest. As a matter of fact, he just gave the face like, yes, Craig, you let him talk. So, so anyway, what I'm trying to say is I saw your response. That happened twice. You know, mm-hmm. that pisses me off. It's none of your business, right? Is that you not said act correct? real. You said act real. That's fantastic. And I love mm-hmm. the real. So I want to respond in a real way what that's about for me when I say that to you. Like it's, we all knew. And for me, it's about when I was Wait, a kid. I'm going to let you. Got it. It's not what's happening now. let's now. take that. Well, it does happen now. Of course it happens now. Not really. I this mean, is I, a, oh, this is a. I don't really think about it anymore. Well, yeah, in you that do. respect. Yeah, I do believe you do. I mean, you're no, just I reflecting upon it. You know, no, just it's a pattern. It. It's not a reality. It's a pattern. Mm-hmm. It's a, there's more nuance to it. Yeah, that's what I've come to believe. As it, it's a, it's a pattern of behavior more so than it is a uh, what what I really feel because I don't feel that way about you. Right, but or I anybody. mean, but so well, okay. Let's put that to the side. Let me just say, reflect back what I think it is for someone else who is saying I always knew or whatever it was that kind of ignited something in this conversation. So for me, we talked about this before we came on here, is this is a real conversation. I like it to unfold naturally, organically, genuinely, right, in a Mm -hmm. flow. So in that case, this is just, just, just honest feedback, reflecting back on that or anybody that I knew. I have another friend closeted and we all knew we all knew and the part that I think I'm getting at is it's like a disappointment for us because we really want to know you and we and we know that you could do that you could release yourself to us and feel safe or whatever it is so it's in other words we're responding to, to almost like a phoniness or a facade and we're saying hey we want the real you so when I say we always knew you know, it's not to, meant to be sound like the bully that I'm sure you've been bullied. I totally relate to that and understand that. It's saying, hey, it, w- it would have been fine if you would have said, hey, everybody here on this cast who already know, yes, I'm gay and I'm really dealing with this. And then we're there for you in a different way. And I say this, by the way, for listeners who might be in the closet, for instance. You know, my old roommate uh, finally came out, Todd Glass, Oh yeah, a few years ago. It's another one. He was my roommate. At 16 years old, he moved in with me. And did I, you know? I did and I didn't. But the part that I'm getting at is... He was good at it. He was. He was, like a, he was like a professional. He never talked to me. Although I sent a woman to him once. Oh, did you? He never wanted to talk to me. And he'd always uh, make a joke and then walk away. Uh-huh. And even when I... When the he ad- didn't want to see the himself. The advocate had called me and asked to do an interview with him. And I reached out to him and he never called me back. Yeah. It's well, like there's a, there's a, you never want to be, there's a, I don't know, there's a thing where a lot of gay people who don't, who are closeted don't want to be involved with people that are out. Exactly. It's and also, I, also have fa- I have found, is this true? Have you found this to be the true, not of yourself, but other people? I have found gay men to be homophobic. Well, anybody can be homophobic. I'm saying, yeah, yeah but that's, would be a surprise to straight people to know I don't think so. Not in this day and age. I don't know about that. Well, maybe I mean, some it's, it's kind of a surprise to people. It's I'm a pretty aware guy. It's a little surprise to me. It's like homophobic it's, it's, to themselves. You mean or to yeah, to themselves and other oh, people yeah. and just really uncomfortable. But let's also and what be, I'm trying to say is when you're out of the closet, when, you're more comfortable. But let's also be clear: when all this was going on, friends at home, this was 1990. Yes, this is and this, this is 31, 32 years ago. Mm-hmm. So 89 or 90 is when we did that. Yeah, and that's a long time ago. And I was in a whole different place, and I w- and there was, and it was not safe. So what you're saying was wrong. It was not safe at all. I I, I guess we're thinking to ourselves that it is. My other friend, I, why don't we go a, away from you and just? I have another friend. I think you probably know him, Jerry, and he just Jerry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, closet, big time! Uh, like with the whole pretending he likes women. Maybe he's bi. And no, know. not 
Oh. Not and again, I knew it. So he's having these conversations. So you have with a me. thing though about this, isn't it interesting? You have a thing about this. Well, if somebody isn't completely honest with you, you feel like, it, it, forgive me, but it's is like, it personal. You think I'm taking it personal? Well, it's you make it about you. It's not about you. Again, I. It's I'm so trying to reflect you. back, on especially I, God. Then huh? I mean, especially then. I mean, man, you, you know, I, I I I can tell you things that happened to me on the road. That man. But isn't any relationship about both people? Uh, yeah. You're acting like it's like some yeah. self-obsession thing. I'm saying no, to you, it is, this it, is my friend now, he, a much better okay, friendship then, than we had. Then let me, let me, and let he's me, telling me about yeah. women, and I'm knowing he's not telling the truth. Did you ask him? You see what I'm saying? Did you ask him that if it bothered you, know, that you felt that? What do you think I should have done? I think you, I would have sat it's down. It's a great conversation, I would have sat down. You haven't had this before? Oh, yeah. You've had this exact conversation? Very many times with straight guys about really? this. Yeah. There's a certain about this thing I'm reflecting back I'm, to you I, the, that we gay men are mu straight men are much more interested in gay men than we are in you. <laughs> That's what I find in life. We're not as interested in you, and I think it's because we're, I guess, more interesting in terms of our sexuality is more open. And I think sexuality is very. That's uh, not what it is for me. I I don't know what it is for anybody. It, I'll let you know. I it think is, that yeah. the idea of it or just how our life leads is very different in certain aspects. And I think that's appealing to people. Mm -hmm. There's a freedom that we have because we have no rules set for us. Whereas you guys have it all mapped out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're on your third marriage, you know. Would you relax with the third marriage? You know, you've Somebody had else did that the other day to me. The first one doesn't See, you, count. The oh, first one doesn't count. Oh, the first count. one is it's just, no. it's a starter kit. It was. <laughs> and the second one was, I liked her. What? I did. I, wasn't that? No, no, Nancy? that's the first one. Oh, Nancy's the first one. Yes, I love Nancy. Yes, I'm sure you do, but and I do too. You know, just, she's great. I met her a couple. I just think she's yeah. A doll. If, if you were tight with my other ex-wife, I would not be happy because oh. she's really bad news. But there is a there is an. an it, I shouldn't say that. She. I shouldn't say. I should say. Yes, she's very bad news, and it's been really difficult on everyone. Uh -huh. But if someone is friends with her, I always question them, like how they don't see you know, the damage that she does. But that's a whole other topic. Gotcha. So, but I am fascinated by this premise that you have that we are more interested in you than you are in us. Well, you are, that would make sense because I mean, we talking some, out loud. We, we you're some, surrounded oh, by, you're, it's patriarchy. You're I very mean, aggressive. The, the, me? The, no, or I'm, just Straight us. people. Straight people in general. We're aggressive. Are, are very aggressive about your lifestyle. It's very out there. It's everywhere you you look. It's blatant. There's no holding back. You know, I was I was at a, a gay uh, where was it a gay bar the other night. They had these. Uh, it was a video bar. They were doing a uh, a Rock Hudson night or something, and then mm -hmm. we all went down the block to another <laughs> bar after it was. They were showing all these videos of Rock Hudson. It was great. All these vintage stuff. And uh, there are these girls there for their bachelorette party, you know, and they just get so drunk and they come to the gay bars and they think that they own it. They have no respect for being in a different place. They grab people and touch you and yeah. it's really, and they get drunk and then they, you know, throw up, you have to hold their hair and it's just <laughs> the whole thing, you know, and it's interesting. I don't know very many gay people that would do that in a straight bar. I don't know many people that would do that. And I mean, gay heard, men or gay women. Either, yeah. Either. We're much more careful people of what we do and where we do it because we've had to be. I'm fascinated by... But it's also an age thing too. I think I can't talk for people under 40. It's over 40, under 40 kind of a thing. I can't talk to the newer kids or now. They're so comfortable where they are. I'm so in awe of them. Well, and also maybe even envious because they oh didn't have God, to go yes. through what you had to go through. Yeah, not envious. I wouldn't say envious. I, I'd say um, happy. It makes me happy to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I really have a happiness about you, it. In a, in a way, you were kind of like an explorer. You were kind of like, right? Uh, Some of the first I to, was a hamster. Could, <laughs> you know, I mean, right? I, talk about, I talk about my comedy act, about I actually ask for a round of applause and how evolved we are that celebrity gay people are able to come out of the closet. I talk about that in my act. I mean, It's still not equal. Of, co that, no, well, of course it's not. There's no equalness to stuff, and that's what everybody... No. So, and, and same I, with race. It's not It's not. Well, equal. that's... Black people have actually taught me so much in mm -hmm. terms of myself over the years because of being in the movie Birth of a Nation, and I toured for a year, and I had to learn what 
What's, wipe, wipe. What, is, what does toured for a year mean? Uh, doing uh, all sorts of publicity events, openings, really? everything. For, it was a You're big, really great in that, by the way. It was a big well, thing. You committed to that accent. Where did that accent come from? I have, uh, when I went to the, the birth of a nation, I played, it was a, like a, I, I, I played a white heterosexual Christian plantation owner in 1831. <laughs> I went on the set, and uh, Nate Parker, who's the director, actor, producer, star of the movie, his acting coach, said, I know you. I know your work. He said, where'd you? And he saw me, because all day I was talking in the accent. I didn't want to leave it. I talked like this and I just I know where I learned how to do that and move, move my voice down real low. I worked on my voice for 10 years before that so I played things like that and I know so when I did it he said where'd you learn your accent from and I said well, I don't know roots I have no idea <laughs> roots because certain things just are in me that was a big time thing from our childhood roots. oh yeah I mean that was uh, that was the mini series oh of course there was I think it probably set records Oh, it did, yeah. For people watching it. It was like destination television, of which they don't have now. No. Well, they do. Binge television. It's binge is way different than destination television. When the entire country, right, at the same you see time. all the lights on at the homes, because families are gathered around one television but I love to binging. watch something like that in Rich Man, Poor Man. Oh, yeah, I love that. I mean, that was... Oh, Nick Nolte. God, but that was, was a way to bond with your family. It. I think that was a great thing because that's just not going on anymore. You watch when you want to watch. Oh, you watch on a phone. You can my watch. family never bonded watching television. No. Oh, God, no. You're kidding. Someone was always yelling or screaming or hitting someone with a remote control. They could yell and scream during the show. No, <laughs> the, not my family. So yeah. Your family didn't sit down well, and watch television? Oh, God. What were you raised on? Like um, I had my shows. They were like my family. And you went into the shows by yourself. You just turned that TV on. Oh, I was like obsessed. One day, we had, one uh, weekend, we had gone to Big Bear. I don't know if you remember this. They used to have the fall preview show where they'd show what was going to be on for the new season. Mm -hmm. We went to Big Bear. It was snowing. The TV didn't work. I was fit to be tied. I was so upset <laughs> because I was going to miss the fall preview show. And if I didn't watch that show, I didn't know who my family was going to be for the year. You know, and I was like, <laughs> I, I was obsessed. I think that's great. But it's just, it's I, nuts. I can relate. Uh, how about I do a guess on a couple of your shows? Okay, go ahead. A couple of the ones where you went, I just love this show. You're going to be surprised. I'm going to go Bewitched was uh, a big one when you were Yeah, little. I like Bewitched. Wasn't the one I went nuts for. Okay, all right. So I'm off on this. Hmm. You don't know me that well. Well, I'm listen. There's something you don't know about me. I know you don't know this. I see clients. I'm a psychic. Oh. So I can pick up energies from people. It's actually probably why this show goes pretty well. Because I pick up energies. I pick up your anger. I picked up. <laughs> well, you prodded me and then you, 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 you poked me. See, and so I was right. You were angry. So yeah. I pick up these things and that might have been influenced by my kids. Young kids are binge watching Bewitched right now. So much fun. One of our guests was it Tabitha, the, it Tabitha from Bewitched. Yeah. Only remaining character, by the way, except for Bernie Coppell. On the entire show that's Wait, alive. Is it, is it, really? Is there no one else? No, no one else. I've trust oh. trust me, I've researched this. I'm so Oh, into that's it. not true. What? I'm gonna tell you one. The kid that played Adam. He lives in Palm Springs <gasps> and he's a handyman and he actually hanged my TVs in my apartment. The brother. She yes. didn't tell me that. Well, he's such a baby. He he doesn't even remember being on the show. Really? Yeah. Well, well, obviously she remembers because she was on it for years. Erin Murphy is Her, her name. sister still alive was on the show too. Her twin her, sister. Her, but guess what? Episode We don't want to talk about her because that's a whole other episode. <laughs> There's a tease anyway, for you. Anyway, so Bewitch was a show that I like, but you want to know the shows you want Hold to Hold on, I want to have one more guess. Go ahead, guess a couple times. I'm going to guess I'm going to guess an obscure one. Okay. Hogan's Heroes. I liked it, but it wasn't my show. Uh, oh. It's all, a little before my time too, age-wise. Well, yeah, but I'm but I talked about this recently. We had shows you can consider from our generation. We never watched First Run. I never watched one episode of the Andy Griffith Show First Run. We watched it on reruns. I think we watched uh, First Run Mayberry RFD. That was more, yeah, yeah. That's when you were I think it's so long ago. It's hard to remember. But that's what I'm saying is is a lot of the the First Run shows that we did watch were Mary Tyler Moore, which I'm going to say that's at the top of your list. Near Big it. time. There you go. But Rhoda bigger. Rhoda bigger. Oh, my God. A Jewish family on television that seemed like Jewish people? Oh. Are you kidding me? I'll give you it, an obscure one. Arnie. 
Oh, yeah, loved it. There you go. But I, I Herschel Bernardi. Well. He was only on from one or two seasons. Yeah, it's exactly. But within that CBS lineup of uh, MASH. No, MASH wasn't a show for Network. Me. No, I'm, I, I'm not. I Network. would say. Uh, New Heart. The show that I, shows that I, were, that I was obsessed with. Mary Tyler Moore is one of them. And Rhoda's number, Rhoda number Moore. one. Right, got Moore. it. Rhoda. Okay. Lucy. Lucy. Lucy, I was just obsessed. But again, it wasn't first run. No, you I watched all the, I, I love Lucy's. The other ones I like too. I don't Did you like the Lucy's that were in color? I never got into them as much here's as I Lucy, did. Here's Lucy, I like better because, here's because Lucy. her kids were on. Desi Arnaz Jr. had the biggest crush on, and Lucy Arnaz was so much fun on the show. <laughs> I, I love that, and I saw those. I love you. Well, you just, and I saw you just those. slipped that in there. I didn't slip it. I said it. But but it's, just let me. Can, can I react for a second before you go on a monologue? Uh, I I just don't hear that from my interviews with a man who mentions that Desi Arnaz Jr. was a crush. Okay, let me take that in. That seems it's very so uncommon. Nineteen thirty six or something. Like that. <laughs> but uh, I, I, when no, I, that's Desi Arnaz Senior. But here's Lucy. I saw okay. a first run. I think. I think. Right. I, I think so. I don't think we did, but, but, but the, the thing is about it, I just didn't like it as much as I did the original with Ethel uh -huh. and Fred. They were really... But I love Gail Gordon. He was so fun. Oh, Mrs. Carmichael. Who? No, Lucille. Who? Lucille. <laughs> Lucille. Uh, we love people I like do that. that. And I Mr. Do. Drysdale was another one who's uh, similar to that from Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, yeah. I thought it was almost the same character. Yes, and so was Floyd the barber. Oh, no. Floyd was very... Andy. Andy. Goober. Did you know that they were uh, all he had a stroke? You know that. And oh, is that it? Floyd was always, from episode one, he's up and around. I mean, season one, season two on, always sitting. Well, at least they kept him on the show. They that kept him nice. on the show. Wasn't it nice? They yeah. just would like throw him into a sidecar for Barney. Oh, that show or, ruined everybody's life. God, that show ruined our lives. Andy Griffith show did? A show full of closet gay guys <laughs> with, a, with a maid running around. Andy, Andy. With some sad woman that never found anybody. You know, in a town where everybody's white. There's no Jews or black people. You go in and you tour on the road and you think to yourself, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is this? Where's it? There's Where's a nice town that people are going to put a cross on your lawn. I mean, who was Closet? I know Jim Neighbors. Oh, Jim Neighbors. They all seemed like they were. None of them had girlfriends. They didn't. Even, none well, of, that's true. You know, they were all single men, older men. Yeah. They just sort of, and Aunt B is like that's probably lesbian. Oh, and, but, but so sad that she didn't never found anybody. You know, just I mean, just you know, she's a, <laughs> yeah. Now you just rule my whole child. Biker. Well, the same as Alice on the Brady Punch. I mean, my God. Right. You know, definitely, you know. Brady Bunch, was that one for oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was That one. show was another show. Those shows really messed me up because the parents, my mother always used to say, so why can't you act like the kids on the Brady Bunch, you know? <laughs> I said, well, why can't you act like the mother? And then she'd smack me across the face. And then, uh, but you have a great relationship with your mother today. Oh, yeah. It's right? all, all about forgiveness. Isn't that great? Yeah. Now, there's something you and I have in common. Very much so. My mom, I just saw her last week it is the most incredibly bonded relationship that i ever could have dreamed of and never did i think it could go there but my mom lives I was, next door i was filled with, oh my mom lives next door, so maybe I, i'd be tired of my mother she yeah lives so next door. I, mine is like you know i'm that guy that people live at the end of the block and they go oh that's jason stewart he never found anybody he's single again you know and then they throw balls on my the kids in my building they throw balls on my grass and then i keep them <laughs> do you, do you, you don't do that. You're that guy? Yes, I am. Now, that's from my childhood. I couldn't stand Mr. Cataldi did that to us. It was, it was always, he had like a pile of our balls. It's kind of like, I'm no, kidding. you're not. You I'm probably kidding. keep all keep their the balls. balls. The kids love me. Now, do you have a thing, you know, I, you, you never want to go stereotypical when you're doing an interview with someone who is gay. But there are some, aren't there some stereotypical things? Like I'm only like, gay on the weekends. Like you, so I can't be gay every day anymore. It's too much. I, I, get, I start up on Friday, Saturday I'm in there. You know, Sunday I'm lying down, and Monday I'm moving furniture with you. So, I'm back, you know. Really? So on, on like a Wednesday you're straight? Yeah, I just can't. You can't go that yeah, far. You yeah. can't. I don't have sex with women, but, you know, that's, you know. But, but you talk straight. I have, I have, yeah. You start talking like this here. You know what's so funny is yeah, you I keep saying all these things. I'm looking at the bosoms on that lady over here. And well, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't have that southern accent. but um, I, that's I was imitating your southern accent that you oh, committed to. It's hard times and small farmers it's like you. Hard times and small farmers like you. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's, 
well, I just learned it. And you, 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 you were that for how many, 10 years you were trying that part? <laughs> well, I worked on it. I worked, I had been cast when I was a kid in a movie about Vietnam where I played a Southern guy. And that's when I first started working on it. Yeah. Then I did a movie called Southern Man where I played a teacher that was murdered because he was accused of being gay. And then I started working on it. I just auditioned for one. Yeah. Perfect, perfect subject that I want to ask you about because, you know, the woke generation that we're in, I'm sure you're not into the woke thing either. Um, I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, I, I think I'm pretty woke. I try to be. I don't want to be woke anymore. Yeah, I, woke I, is, to, I, I don't know what that really means anymore. I don't either. Bill but, Maher says it on his show. He likes to be ornery. He's become that grouchy old man now. <laughs> and I love his show and I love him. But, I, you know, I've met him a couple times. He's that same guy. He's, he's exactly who he is on the what? Someone same as he was years oh, yeah. ago. Someone yeah. doesn't laugh at a joke on his show. It's national oh, television. And he, oh. goes, he goes, what? That was too much. Oh, oh, he gives him the look. Oh, yeah. He he's so tough stare on down. them. And he, yeah, right. He gives him a stare down like, you, yeah. and, and just, just so judgmental. You know, I've always said about Bill Maher, what I like about him. Honest. Is he's honest. Totally. 100%. He's honest. He is who he is. He is not a nice guy. I've never felt that. Really? <laughs> if I watch him on TV. No, just, just like, and he's absolutely, like, we, we talked earlier about being spiritual. We both don't really care for that word. But for lack of another term, I have a higher spiritually, power. a higher power, goodness, you know, you could, you know, meditate and pray a little bit. You know what I mean? Just, you know what I'm saying? It's like, mm -hmm. not him. He is. Well, he doesn't believe, his movie, Religious List. Oh, of course. Which yeah. I loved. So did I. I thought yes. it was great. And I don't believe in organized religion myself for myself. Correct. But if you were a born again or you were orthodox, whatever you wanted to be, I respect you. It would probably not be as close because I think that's a big thing in someone's life to be around somebody that, you know, that reads a book and does it. I, you know, is Jesus Christ a real person? I don't know. Christ consciousness could be, I right? Think, I, I mean, I, I think it's, I'm, I think I'm with it, you. it's, it's an amalgamation of people and right. stories. Right. And I mean, the Bible is, is basically the most incredibly popular book without a publicist. I mean, Jesus Christ, the most famous guy that never had to go on talk shows. No, uh, you know, not at all. Last dinner, no men. No, Imagine, oh, I'm sorry, no women. <laughs> Messed that up. Messed it up. Oh, no women. I saw where that was going yeah, anyway. But no women. He deserved to flub that joke. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it coming a mile I away. Know, but it's so, true. It's not a joke. It's just the truth. Well, it is true. I mean, he was hanging out, you know, the Mary and, Magdalene. But, but also, but he, the, was the a, point he was is, a carpenter. He was a, he was a working guy yeah. of what they say. And he was also Middle way, Eastern or half black or whatever it was. Way, it was written years and years later. And, you know, if I told you something now, 20 minutes from now, when you're driving back to Palm Springs, it would be a different story. So, yeah, yeah it's, so it we have to and remember And it's in that. Aramaic than to Hebrew. Exactly, and, exactly. And, uh, he did not Latin look like that. Anyway, King's we Americanized it like we always oh, do. Oh, sure. But spirituality is the one thing that he does not discuss on there. He, does, he has his shtick going with religion, about, you know, how You're could right. Jonah never, be inside of a I've whale? Never, he never has spiritual leaders. Is there, do we, it's, it's, do we fade to black? Is that what happens? At the, do you believe we fade to black at the end? No. Do you believe what? What do you believe? I believe we have a, a spirit, a light that is infinite and everlasting. I think we keep coming back and back. See, and I, I don't, think we, I'll tell you what. I, I think, think we evolve. And I, 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 I do believe what, in reincarnation as well. I, I don't know exactly, and I don't know for sure, but I know that, you know, these cell phones that we carry around mm -hmm. can do a hundred things. Mm -hmm. And if you and I were sitting in 1970 and we were playing ball or just hanging out together and they said, oh, there's going to be this thing when we get older. It's going to be able to make a movie and send letters and, and talk to people and there's no, there's no cord. You would have went, Pfft. You're an idiot. <laughs> we would never have believed it. You wouldn't have went over to your wall phone and made a call to, exactly. and had to, to a pull, mental hospital. And to pull the cord, you know, <laughs> right, exactly. and walk around into another room. We had to have a long cord. You could, my mom had, about, that's when I was in the closet, oh, my mom, by the way. My we mom, had to be in a closet to exactly. talk to people. That was your only privacy. Exactly. Or you take the cord. It was so long, my mom yeah. could go outside. Exactly. And <laughs> so, you know, get me the cord, phone, you know. And it, 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 I believe that heaven and hell is here on earth. You lose a child. Totally agree. That's hell. It's it's heaven you, on you, earth. You meet the person who yeah. who makes you the happiest that you fall in love with. Totally agree. That's heaven. You know, I mean, it's happening here in our lives right now. But that's not a difference to what I said no, though, but about let me, reincarnation. Let me, let, me, okay. let me get the whole thing out because yeah. it's, it's 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 sort of, you know, it's my I think we're always here. 
I don't think we ever go away. Mm -hmm. I think we just our spirit. It's we, just in so, a different temple, body you know, temple. When we see a so phone, saying? we see the phone. If we turned out all the lights, we would see where things were connecting, maybe, and how this connects. I don't even understand. How does our TV work? You know, how does mm -hmm. that happen through these wires and this thing and the internet? If we, I think technology is somehow connected to spirituality mm. and God. I mean, it must be because we can't we can't see it. You know, I remember. I don't know if you. I was I was in my mom's house. It was five years ago. I was moving her to Los Angeles because she was ailing and getting older. She was seventy nine, and we were packing up the house that she had lived in for the last twenty five years in Cathedral City next to Palm Springs. And I'm sitting there, and we're just talking. We're not arguing. There was nothing special. Do you want these dishes? Do you want this fork? You know, whatever it is. And in the alcove of the dining room, I saw my dad just walk by and go like this. Salute you. You know, like, good job. Wow. It was like 10 seconds. He was wearing an outfit that he had worn when I was a kid. When did he pass? Uh now it's not. How old were you? I was, uh, it was nine years ago. Oh, because you were an adult. 2012, yeah. 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 And, and I, this was when did this happen? This where happened he, around, uh, I guess, five years ago. So it was, you know. He gave you an attaboy kid, love you kid. No, it was, it was, and my father would, ne it was not that kind of guy. My father was a, a Holocaust survivor, not the camps, but the ghettos. My father was a, a guy who came to this country, didn't speak English. He would look at you and he said, I said, Dad, I got a part on Everybody Hates Chris. Everybody hates Chris. What a stupid show. Why don't you be on Everyone Loves Raymond? They love Raymond. They hate Chris. I'll pay you not to be on this stupid show. That's the way my father was. He was very pragmatic. You know, he'd watch something and he'd go, I didn't see you the next week. What happened? I said, well, Dad, that was only, what, what did you do? What did you say? Did you mess this up? Can't you keep a job? You know, he was just like totally very, you know, he made himself a self-made millionaire. He, came, he started as a janitor in a necktie manufacturing company. He, everything that you see about me, do this, do this, da, 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 learn to do, know where your light is, know what you, when you come to an interview, what you want to talk about, all the things you're making fun of me and kidding me about. It's the way I learned to be for my dad. Mm -hmm. He taught me to be prepared. Values. Yes. Work hard, be prepared, ethics. show up. Yeah. You know, all that kind of By stuff. By the way, that's spiritual to me. Is it? Values. Yes. Ethics, values, goodness, kindness, well, it forgiveness. Wasn't all, it, wasn't forgiveness. Always, it wasn't always kind. He Not, was tough. No one's always anything. Yeah, he was tough. My right? parents were tough. No one's always anything. You know, my, my mom and we dad. Can, we can categorize them. Yeah. Like, I saw my mom only one way for years. Now well, I only see her then another I'll speak, way. I'll speak to the camera, to any yeah. kid that's watching this show. Your parents are only people. They're just people that had you. That's it. And if they didn't rape you or beat you with a tire iron, everything should be forgiven. That's just the way it is. I believe that. Even that? Forgive. <sighs> I don't know. Raping someone? Well, I was, I was kidnapped. I was kidnapped. Oh, that's really true? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. By, I have complete forgiveness. By your mom? His name is Ben Rauscher. Wow. He took me away 13 years old. But I have complete forgiveness. And if I didn't, I would be in his prison for the rest of my life. <sighs> See what I mean? But you don't, so you're saying forgiving, but not have, like what, what Oprah said. You forgiving. don't have to be friends with him. You don't have to. Well, hang. not only that, it's not approving. To forgive is not to approve. You forgive for yourself. And you also forgive yourself for having the resentments and having all the residue. And I'm not saying it's not it's wrong to have those things. Why did he, why did he uh, kidnap you? He's a serial pedophile. Oh, uh, oh, so. Yeah, oh. he's a serial pedophile. But I don't want to ask a personal question. Do you talk about this? I mean. <laughs> I've talked about it. Oh. Actually, Were you I got molested? into it a little bit with Jamie Kennedy, and he literally said, we're going to edit this out. It was too dark for him. Uh -huh. Doesn't look like it is for you. You look fascinated. Well, no, I not not. I just mean it would explain. Different I could say to you what you said to me earlier. What? None of your business. <laughs> well, you were. I was being funny with you in a funny, angry way. And so was I just now. Oh, okay. I just, none of your business. No, but I but I want to be it's sensitive. Not, I don't want to be. Oh, don't be sensitive with me. I a, don't. Well, that's who I it's am. It's a natural flow conversation. Well, listen, what so, you are, you so and you I are, have. Are you? Are you, are you a survivor? I, yes, I am. You and I have a lot more in common, and I'm finding this in my in my flow, and even my psychic flow, and even in this conversation, we have a ton more in common than we thought an hour ago. 
in my opinion. I've always thought we had stuff in common. I never did. <laughs> See, he's a comedian, and he can't, he can't, uh, he, we can't pass up that moment. It's just, it's too hard for us. It's like, it's hanging there, like, you know, it's like, don't a piece project. Of, That's it's you. like a piece of chocolate, you, you know. I know. It's, it's I just, love it. It's a natural instinct that just, it just, it, it reveals itself constantly. And by well, the way, but there's, a, I was getting back to the Bill Maher thing is comedy is truth. And so is spirituality. That's why he is a spiritual person. Comedians are spiritual beings because we tell the truth. It's unveiled. It's pulling curtains. This is what we do. And people don't call it spirituality because we think you need to say namaste and, you know, the word's used so much. It's like love. It's used so much that it, I don't know what spirituality? it means. spirituality? The word spirituality, the word, word love. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it means anymore. And when you said forgiveness, I almost didn't really know what you meant. And now I know what you mean. Yeah. There's yeah. different forms of, well, for it's, those it's, listening at home yeah. and listening to, there's different, you, you, you don't have to, you know, break bread with this guy, but you can forgive him and go, this guy is really broken. And this guy has had whatever caused him to go where he Correct. is. Yeah. You know, I can pray for him and hope well, that Well, there's one a, that saying that, f but for the grace of God, go I. You know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. listen, I'm pretty oh, confident just, in this that we share this in common. Just, we, we, oh, that just sort of, that? I don't know, it just sort of hit me. Which did? Just what happened to you. It just seems awful. Oh, thank you. It just sort of hit me. Thank and then you. you say, by the grace of God, so can I. And I don't know why that, you know, maybe it's from movies or something. It's like when I hear any sort of Jewish music in a movie mm -hmm. because my sister's an Orthodox Jew and, mm. and sort of uh, got rid of me around 30 years ago because I was gay. So I can't hear that without mm. pain attached to it. I can't see someone mm. with any religious person, even though I watch a lot of the stuff, it's very painful. Mm. It never, you know, though I forgive her, I move on. Yeah. Let her be. I don't, if she calls me, I, I'll say something, but I don't reach out anymore. Sure. Yeah. I'm that way. Yeah, listen, I'm with you on that too. I My just, sister as well. Had to stop. I don't know what she's orthodox about except for resentments, but right. you know, and I've, I've sent her a few notes and yeah. wide I, open, wide can open. I come in? Hey, can I come in? Uh, excuse me. It's been three years. Can I come in? No, I don't want to go in anymore. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, you don't want to go in the way it's been. That's for sure. Because it's a very toxic dynamic. But you don't get that because they say to you, you know, family, blood is in my autobiography. I say blood is thicker than water. Not that <laughs> chapter because it's not true. You know, these are just people you grew up with. You were put together. It doesn't mean you have to like them. It doesn't mean you have to be friends with them. Yeah. You know, and then when this whole, you know, the Trump versus you know, a uh, Biden thing came out and, the, and people who were supporters of Trump, it was very hard for me in my family. I just, how do you talk to people that are, it could be a support of a man that has these kind of values? You know, well, there's something you and I share. And I used to say this before, and I, I don't want to get into politics because it really freaks people out. And I think well, that's right unfortunate. If you're listening to me right now, I think it's very unfortunate that you can't have the discussions or hear something that Jason just said that I agree with that has nothing to do with politics. It's who the man is. Oh, yeah. He does not share my values whatsoever. And you can't tell me. women came out and said yeah, I mean, that he... We, we that know. He, we, you know yeah, people but, don't remember that. I right. think they, they, oh, they were I, either raped or right. sexually molested right. by him. 24 and, yeah, women. And you can't go all 24 with your usual deflections of, oh, she's trying to sell a book. She wants attention. Maybe yeah. one or two, but, but not... <laughs> 24 and, and and it's not even one or two you know I always say to people that do these you know excuses this this whole deflection methodology you know i say to them say, have you ever looked at a home like up on a hill some mansion you go you know how she got her money accusing a guy falsely she made a ton of money on no there's nobody wealthy from this that's that's something that people in this patriarchal world that's a def patriarchal defense. Have you been this sexually harassed by people in, in our business? Have you ever been? Sexually harassed? Yeah. Not, not, not physically touched or, or uh, raped or, you know, or pushed up against. Well, I've been sexually harassed by straight men in this business, specifically comedians and club owners for basically my entire 38 year <gasps> career. What does sexually harassed mean? Though? Uh, people what asking you if your boss says, Hey, are you a top? Are you a bottom? Uh, I don't that's know harassment. Well, why would, yeah, you, I, if I, you said to a woman, hey, uh, can I touch your vagina? I mean, are you, how do you have sex? What do you, at, at, in a workplace, how do you do that? With your boss, you know, people would ask questions that were so. Well, it's a come on. It's, isn't that different? I don't think it is. I really I, want I to think, talk about this. I think it's a power play. Okay, whatever think you think power. it is, though, are they not 
coming on to you, and that's I their don't think so. that's their method of coming on. I if there's somebody saying, "I want to touch your junk," I don't th- no, that's different. But they, they're it asking is? questions about your sexual. What do you do in bed? What if they they're use, coming on to you? They use the f word, f a. You know, I don't like to say it. Right. Uh, that word, and say, what do they? You know, you know, but, do but in bed? Is it, is, aren't yeah. they basically? saying that they think that they've got a shot with you? I mean, aren't I they don't asking? Think so. yeah, I they don't think are. They I, are. I don't agree. Can you listen to me? They yeah. are. I think it's 50-50. That's what they're that's that's the way they are coming on to you. Look, I'm guilty of it. I'm well, guilty of it. Not I've never done that with a man because I'm really I talk about this in my act too. I just don't like the penis thing. It's just not my jam. You know what I mean? You don't no, like your no own. Pun you don't like your own. Penis. I love my own. I've tried to blow myself. I used to blow myself back so in then the day. What's the difference between blowing yourself and then blowing other There's people? There's a big difference. It's <laughs> a big difference. I'm not yeah. going to talk about that again. Okay. That was always a topic with a with a straight guy actually. Okay. So, but I do uh, want to ask you mm-hmm. um, about my series. What do you think about? Mm-hmm. I'll get to that. Okay. What do you think if this could be part of it? What do you think about... You'd be a great therapist, you know. <laughs> yeah. That put me in your series. What do you think about... This is a big hot topic in Hollywood. Um, some, a straight person playing a gay person. I think it's a big, complicated question. It is? Yeah. Well, let's, un- let's unpack it. And I think... I don't, un- I don't have uh, one thought on it. What are your so general I, thoughts? I, you, okay, I, for okay, instance, you see I, 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 Brokeback Mountain, for instance. Brilliant. Those two guys were just, it was a perfect movie. Did not matter to you that yes, they're both it did. straight. It did. Well, there you go. But they were perfect at what they did. They were the best choices at that time. Wow. But I do believe that, but that's not, your question is the wrong. Mr. Brady from the Brady Bunch, you weren't upset that it's a gay man playing no. a straight guy? <laughs> your, que- your question is wrong, what you're asking me. Oh, oh wow. The question I is, the wrong is question. The, no, the question is wrong. You're saying, do, how do I feel about uh, straight people playing gay parts? Yeah. And the big joke to that was always, uh, you know, what are they going to wear to the Oscars? You know, because that would always be, that's what, what would happen. You know, William Hurt, Kiss of the Spider Woman, da 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 you know, all these parts. Richard E. Grant recently, you know, he, uh, all, you know for the, the film with Melissa McCarthy, I forgot the name of it. But, uh, that would be the thing always, if somebody would play something so different than f- themselves, you know, special needs person, all that kind of stuff. That happens all the time. The yeah. problem you is... You played a Southerner. I played a Southerner. I played a straight guy. And I was happy to play that part. I was, I was a racist. I was a, a plantation So in owner. general, if we're going to wrap that up, which I just got the rap sign, uh-huh. which we're going to get to your career now but I'll answer for the, the last qu- five answer, minutes. I'll okay, go the, ahead. I'll answer the question. Yeah. The question is, is the, the playing field fair? I listen to all these things on Clubhouse, all these casting directors say, we always try to get the best person for the role. I don't think so. I think the best person... We don't live in a world where people are able to look and audition the best people because it's all about race. It's all about sexual preference. It's about age. Age is the new thing for you and I. Oh. That's the thing we're dealing with. You were afraid to say, to, we had to whisper our ages to each other in the corner before we came on like a bunch of crazy people in your own office. You know, so the, he's right. By the, way. The, the issue is, the issue is, the question is, how do we make it fair? Yeah. How do we make it fair? You know, how do I get to audition for as many parts as a straight person does yeah. who has the same amount of credits and celebrity that I have? Mm-hmm. How do we how do we do that? How does that happen? Mm-hmm. And that's what I and I'm the chair of the Screen Actors Guild after LGBTQ committee. I created that. Oh, wow. 17, uh, 16, 17 years ago. That's With great. Duncan Crabtree Ireland, who's the head of, of now. He's the CEO at SAG. And well, let's get to your credits. Okay. Because we do have to wrap up. And sure. I know this is something you want to get to. Well, I want people to watch. Okay. You, so what do you want us to watch that you're in? Um, I'm in a series called Smothered on Amazon. And it's about these two guys who have been in a relationship for 30 years who hate each other and can't afford to get divorced. And oh, I like that premise. Except, Are you the writer? Uh, we co-wrote it with the brilliantly talented Mitch Hera. Uh, now, oh, what would happen if I submitted myself as you, a gay man, as a, a, a part, you know that I'm straight. Would you have an opinion on that? Would you go, oh, I'd rather have somebody that I really, would rather have a gay person, yeah. I see, there you go. 
Yeah, I, honestly, I and would. And a young gay person. No, no, he would. <laughs> but you know what? We, 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 you we, didn't get the joke to, because it, you're being ageist. I get it, but we're trying to, we're trying to sell the show as a half-hour show because it's seven five-minute episodes now. Okay. And the, the thing is, is about, uh, they've been told us that we're about our age, a lot about it, why they didn't want to do about our age. You know, because, you know, nobody wants to see five women or you know four women living in a place in Miami and talk about their sex lives if they're in their 50s. No one wants to hear about that. Oh, yeah, it was a show Golden called Golden girls which was the biggest show which is now the biggest show in syndication but oh. nobody wants to see that were you on that no oh, I, you never I, on Golden I was auditioned once i think i never oh, could okay. get in yeah i'm I never surprised you weren't on. i was surprised too so you're you're <laughs> also on goliath i'm a very popular on, show i'm gonna be on uh billy bob thornton series goliath I what believe, do you play that you're pretending you are that you're not i think i'm one? straight in this show you think but the part wasn't big enough to really have a sexuality but i play the uh uh, uh <laughs> I play the head of the board at a pharmaceutical company. It's one of my first, what I would call, really grown-up, older man parts. You know what? I'm totally in charge of something. Yeah. And I got to be. So you a, basically, that's probably a straight guy. I think so. A white yeah. guy too. And I think there maybe was he's a closeted, re- but he's there playing was a reason straight. for that. And uh, I got to be in a scene with J.K. Simmons, Oscar winner, Bruce Dern, two-time Oscar mm-hmm. nominee, and Haley Jo Osment, Oscar nominee from wow. the, the Sixth Sense. I was like. I am really, you know, I was like scared a little. Yeah, and, yeah, you're playing with the big, uh, uh, the biggins, these, you know, and Billy are, Bob Thornton. Oscar he he winner. wasn't in the scene, unfortunately. But it's his, it's, it's his series. It's his yeah. series, and he has an Oscar and two other nominees. Wow. And what was really, you know, Bruce Dern, he's like in his 80s, comes by and he has to say, Charles does this. And he walked by, and by the time the third take, he was going, Charlie is my guy. And I'm thinking, God, this is the guy from coming home. I mean, he's touching you. You know, he's just like, you know, yeah. and I'm, th- I'm in a scene. It was like a childhood dream. It is amazing when we work with oh. the people that we, I don't want to use the word idolize. What's another word for that? Admire. Admire. They, yes. they, they gave us inspired by. Inspired is really good. That's what, because he, he really inspired me. He told me sure. the whole way that coming home went down and how much improvised. He talked to you like, about oh. that. Oh, yeah. We spent a lot wow. of time. I spent a whole day with him. Honestly. Well, I could spend a whole day with you, but, you know, we obviously, we have other guests, you know, believe it or not. Right. And if you want, buy my book, which is called Shut Up, I'm Talking. <laughs> Perfect for this. Yes. That's yeah. the perfect. Yes. It's you available. practically told me that earlier. And then my new stand up album, I'm the Daddy and I Have Candy. Wow. You have a stand up album. Well, I had a lot of time during COVID. Yeah, I guess. To, but how'd you record that? I took tapes of things that I had recorded and I put it together. Oh, wow. You yeah. have a lot of time in your hands. I definitely have. I had you have a studio you set up for your auditions? No, it's my dining room. Okay, I was trying to make you sound bigger than you <laughs> or are. Or in my office. I put the computer up. I have I, the Jason, come on now. You don't want to show the secrets behind the sauce. Oh. I, I don't want to know what's in the sauce. I want, I'm trying to tell people this is a big actor. You really are an impressive actor. Go to Jason Stewart. That's with a U. JasonStewart.com. You can see his reel. He's an amazing actor, a great performer, a great comedian. And you... All the people I talked to about you, they said the same thing. You've really changed. Now, no, I, I've talked to anybody about you. <laughs> well, I, just I don't told, know which I, is worse, that you were talking about me or that I didn't talk about you to anyone. No, I don't know which is worse for our egos. I think it's worse that you didn't talk to other people. <laughs> I, told people I, was doing your, I told people I was doing your show. I was very happy to do it. Honestly. Oh, great. Because, well, this I, is great. because I, I think, if you, honestly, because you're... you were one of the people that became a really, really successful touring comedian a little I mean, bit. In, in a big way. Yeah. You know, you, you made the big money and you went on what I call, I call it straight boy money, honestly. Yeah. And you know, cause it's really hard to get in that world. People don't realize how hard it is to get to the chain and then stay there. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. because they, now we're not just a comedian doing shows. We don't have to just do the time. We don't have to just do, you know, get the job. We have to sell the tickets now. Ooh, yes. We are in charge. We are a publicist and a manager. And I've said that all along that I believe the comedians and it's not about me, but we are the greatest artists there are and should be more respected. We're treated like court jesters many times. Mm-hmm. And we are the producer, the writer, the choreographer. We are the props. We are the makeup. We're everything. And even sometimes a stage manager for our own exactly. show. Exactly. Play the tape you know right and who's who's running the sound at yeah. me from there, by the way there is no more playing tapes yeah anyway jason I, stewart thank you for being here you were awesome i'm glad i hope this was worth your drive from palm springs well i'm doing other things i'm gonna be Next, here all uh, week i love that he says i was doing other things Did you really need to say that well i'm doing i needed to hear tonight, that so. i just couldn't wait to see you craig but it really was a wonderful time 
Remember, everybody, uh, please download us, uh, Enlightened Up, it's called. It's Apple, iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff, all the places where podcasts are located. It's up to you, though, to spread the word. We have no marketing dollars. Uh, by the way, if you want to be a sponsor of the show, please contact me. I'll, I'll definitely wear your goods, talk about you in a very genuine, organic way as we do on this show. Just pass the word around because... We would love to spread that message, awareness of the powers of laughter, the powers of joy, the powers of happiness, the powers of love, the most overused word, according to Jason. Amen. And <laughs> so Praise and, the Lord. And just remember this, people. Take this with you. Enlighten the fuck up, will you? See you next time. 